Let's give a hand for our worship team this morning, for our sound team, for our video team. We appreciate all their hard work. Amen. This is a wonderful day. It's the day that the Lord has made. The Bible says we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? We've been talking about the signs of the end times, and one of the signs is the Holy Spirit who came on the day of Pentecost. So we've been in the end times since the day of Pentecost, but the other signs are not only coming, but recurring and intensifying him. So what was reminding me this morning, what Daniel said, Daniel said about the last days, that uh, knowledge would increase. It's amazing the knowledge that you have today, right? You just say, Google, what does that mean? Google, when was, when was so and so born? I mean, there are lots of things I've never studied, I don't know anything about, but now I can just Google it. Amen? It's amazing, it's a sign that knowledge that is all over the earth and increasing and increasing, whether it's uh, through science, through, through study, or through exploration of the universe. And uh, so this is another, another sign. Another sign, too, is uh, people will travel a lot. They, they, will, they, will, they will go all over the world. And today, we can even go on the moon. I mean, you can go if you have enough money. But already, it, it's being started. It, it's, it's just unimaginable. And Daniel had prophesied all that, that those would be signs. Another sign that we see and we looked at it in Matthew 24 is what the Bible called the apostasy or the lawlessness, falling away from God's laws. And there is one aspect today where we're again falling away from God's laws it's in the domain of the family and of sex. And this morning I want to talk about that. Some 2,000 years ago, uh, the church fathers, the church fathers demonized sex. They, they just said it was bad. And, and clergy couldn't get married. Uh, some even went to the extreme of condemning sex within marriage. And uh, some went uh, into monasteries to, to go away from other people and they thought from temptation. But they discovered that the temptation was in their own hearts. But because of those extremes, in those days we're still suffering from it today. And instead of having people having a normal a normal life and serving God and, and preaching, we have people who unfortunately are uh, taken away from that, kept away, and then they commit abuses. We've never seen so many abuse and the revelation of abuse that we have seen. And that's another sign. That's the that's that apostasy going away from the teaching of the Bible. The teaching of the Bible is sex is very good. God created it. There is nothing wrong with pleasure. Just the Bible gives us a, a framework that we should live it within marriage, marriage between man and a the, and the woman, and motivated by the, the love of God. I want to talk about a topic this morning that the Lord put on my heart that I call the, the Biblical model for love. We have so many ways of defining love today that it's good to go back to the, the Biblical teaching and the, and the basics. 
Today, uh, if you don't like your sex, you can have surgery and change. And at the time when those things started, there were so-called scientific studies that said this will solve the dysphoria problem. This will solve the anxiety of people who have a problem with their male or female identity, and they can choose the the, the identity that, that, that they want. So those studies were, were, were done and they were spread all over, all over the news, encouraging people to go in that direction. And today, we're not hearing it in most of the news, but they have done studies that prove the total opposite based on experience this time. People who did go through sex change, and instead of solving anxiety, it intensified it and it created new problems and new issues. That's what happens with human knowledge, with near human knowledge and, and understanding. Psychological models change, so we need a model that doesn't change, that is sure. And the biblical model is, is a sure model. I want to look at, with you, at biblically unlawful sexual activities on God's love and what God loves mean. And then the different loves, parental love, filial love between, for, between children and parents, and, and friendship, which is another form of love, brotherly love and uh, marital, marital love. Let's start with the hardest part, the hardest part for me to preach. The hardest part is to talk about unlawful sexual activities. But the Lord has shown me on that topic and other topics that if nobody talks about it, if nobody teaches what the Bible says, people are left in darkness and in confusion. The, the Bible is light. God has given us His Word to give us light. So, unlawful sexual activities especially are described in Leviticus chapter 18 and also in Galatians 5, 19. They're called, they're part of the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, etc. The, the first one is adultery. Adultery is having sex with a married person other than your own spouse. That's called uh, adultery. And in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, 14, it says, you shall not commit adultery. In Leviticus 18, 20, it says, moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. Immorality is also described as in Leviticus 18 as having sex with a close relative, close of kin. We can read in verse 6, none of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him to uncover his nakedness, I am the Lord. So it says uh, having sex with a brother or a sister, all of that is something that will not bring good, that, but will bring bad, and that God disapproves. Of course, the uh, rape, and we find that in Deuteronomy 22, 25. It says, but if a man finds a betrothed young woman in the countryside, and the man forces her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die. I mean, the, the, the Bible is pretty strong. But this is under that principle that we see in the scriptures, the wages of sin is death. And, and sin only brings death and bad things. Uh, sodomy, in uh, same-sex intercourse in, in the scripture, it says Leviticus 18.22, you shall not lie with the male as with a woman, it is an abomination. Today, we have a total different look at it, 
But that's not what the Bible teaches us. And it even says that God uh, abandoned to their sins the people who went in that direction. We read that in, in Romans, Romans chapter 1, from verses 24 all the way to, to 32. Something that was very common in the days when Paul wrote that letter to the Romans was the practice of prostitution, even prostitution as uh, a way to a way to honor the gods, the, the gods in, in which people believed in, in those days, they were prostitutes in the temple and was considered uh, a way of worship. So idolatry and prostitution were 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 together. I mean, in that chapter 18, it it tells you uh, don't don't even think about having sex with an animal. It, it, we need to read those texts because. They're, they're there in the scripture, and today it seems that anything goes. The biblical model for sexuality is to be lived, lived between a man and a woman within marriage. So it excludes all, excludes all of the types of, of intercourse. Now let's go to my favorite subject. God's love. And how, how can we uh, understand things within uh, God's love? God's love is, is the standard. We, we read in 1 John 4, uh, 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen? In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And the word that is used in the New Testament language, the Greek of the New Testament, there's difference between classical Greek and the the Greek that is used in the New Testament, only some words are used about love, is the word agape. And agape describes the unconditional, the eternal, the sacrificial love of God. God loves us unconditionally. God gave what He had that was the most precious. He gave His Son and let it die on the cross for us. This is uh, what, what God's love is. And God's love is communicated to us through the, the new birth. We read in, the, in that text that through the, the new birth, we receive God's love. We, we have God's love when we when we are born of God, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, when we believe in Jesus, we receive the Spirit of God. Then there is a spiritual element in us, and the first fruit of that work of the Spirit in us is love. Galatians 5:22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, and that's the that word that is used for God is love. That word agape and the verb agapao in, uh, in, in Greek. It's a love that is so powerful that it allows us to even love our enemies, to forgive things that seem unforgivable. The secret to, to love is to realize how God loves us, how God loves and to receive that love from God and look at 
things that look at people in a total different way. This is a non-sexual love, that, that love of God. Let's look at other forms of non-sexual love in Scripture. Parental love. Parents should never have sex with their children. Parental love is a love that is based on educating, on bringing discipline, on providing. That, that's how that love is manifested and expressed, but not in a, in a sexual way. The Greek word for that is uh, storge in, uh, in, in Greek. Then, uh, say children, their love for the parents doesn't have any sexual or sexual side. Friendship is a love that is, can be very, very strong. You can, you can care for someone of the same sex for all your life. You can really like them. You can really love them. You can really love to spend time with them. In the Bible, we have the example of David and, and Jonathan. And, and it says they loved each other uh, very much. And uh, even the, the father could not uh, separate them or break that love. That's the Greek word, phileo. And it defines also brotherly love, the love that we have for each other. There too, it's a non-sexual love. We are to love our neighbor, and that has nothing to do with sex either. And it, it's caring for them, it's praying for them, it's uh, sharing the, the gospel with them, it's helping them. I mean, there's so many ways to express those uh, non-sexual loves. And it seems that today, again, it's happened before in history, we are confused in those, in those areas. Then we come to marital love. And marital love is where sexuality is, inclu is uh, included, and not only included, but exclusive. There is faithful, faithfulness. Not only faithfulness of feelings, but faithfulness also in the sexual relationship. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 describes it this way, 7-2. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does, and likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. And that love is lived within a covenant. That's why we have marriages, that's why we have weddings, Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. So, marital love is the love that includes uh, sexuality. Now, I want to go to the most important part of this teaching here, that Agape love, the love that comes from God, is what should motivate all the other loves. We, we should love our children the way God loves us. We should love our children the way the Father loves uh, the Son. Uh, it's the same with the, as, as children, we should love our parents, honor and respect them the way God loves us. We also have that same love in, in friendship, in brotherly love. We should love the way God loves us. This is how we, we should love. And actually, that, uh, that love or Christian love is 
and should be the mark of the sons and daughters of God. In John 13, 34, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. And it's the, that word agape that is used here. A new, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, and if you have love for one another. If, and that love will help us even love our, our enemies. And uh, so we, we want to let that, that love of God, that agape love, influence all of our loves. We want our friendship to be motivated by that agape love, love of God. What should be our response to this uh, biblical model? Well, going away from that biblical model, we have to realize that it is a sign of the last times. Because Jesus prophesied, he said, things will be, that's Luke chapter 17, verses uh, 20, 26 to 30, he said the last days will be like the days of Noah. And it says there that all the desires of the heart of men were towards evil. It said it will be like the days of Lot. And, and we know that in the days of Lot, confusion, sexual confusion was part of what uh, brought, brought destruction. So first, realize that uh, when we go away from the biblical model, it's, and it increases the weights, increase and increasing, that's one of the signs of apostasy, of lawlessness, of, of the last signs. Also, we, we should be smart, we should be intelligent. God has created us smart and intelligent. The societal models change. Uh, psychology changes, their understanding of things change. And uh, it's important to know that what people believe today, what, what people are so strong uh, to believe today will be different tomorrow. Or unfortunately maybe even worse tomorrow. But uh, things, things change because models are based on, on so many people believing this. And when so many people believe this, whatever it is, if it's wrong, it's wrong. You can have 90% of the people believe some wrong thing that doesn't make it right. So we have to be, we have to be intelligent, but also we have to be brave. Being, being a Christian is being brave. Being a Christian many times is going against the, the current is going against the, the general consensus of things. And being, being a Christian is people may look at you like you're weird. And this has been uh, the story of the Christian church. And uh, when, we, when we look at the first centuries of Christianity, there, there was uh, such a strong uh, understanding in, in the society where the first Christian lived that the, the emperor was God, that uh, he was the only Lord, and Christians had to make, make a choice between uh, confessing that Caesar is God and Lord or that Jesus is God and Lord. Things were difficult for them. Uh, sometimes Christ, Christians were were, were okay or they were tolerated by the by the empire because they were considered like uh, a Jewish cult and as long as, as long as they were considered like a Jewish cult the, the Roman emperors and system the governments had a certain tolerance towards Christians and uh, but what ha would happen, and you'll, you'll see that if you read the letters to the churches in the book of Revelation, in the first chapters of the book of Revelation, 
what happened is that many times, unfortunately, the Jewish community would denounce the Christians and no, no, they're not, they're not a Jewish cult, they're not a Jewish sect, they're just something else. And they would tell the, the Romans that they're just somebody else. We, 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 we don't know them. They're not part of us. And, and you'll see that sometimes the word synagogue of Satan is used, which meant that the, the Jews were opposed to the Christians and that would create persecution. Also, the temptation for immorality and worshiping through uh, intercourse with prostitutes in, in Greek temples and in Roman temples was part of the pressure. Imagine that people uh, would live under, under that pressure and even to find a job. They, they had to follow or accept the sacrifice of not finding the job that they wanted because they had understood the grace of God, the love of God, the Lordship of Jesus, and, and they, were, they had a different understanding. They followed a different model. But because they were Christian, because they were filled with the Spirit, because they were brave, we have Christianity today all over the world. It took sometimes the sacrifice of some of those, of those Christians. So we also need to realize that God is a God of grace. And if we have fallen in lust, in adultery, in unlawful sexual practices, and if we meet people uh, who, who fall or have fallen into those, those traps of sin, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. God is ready to forgive anyone who changes his mind, who repents. Jesus died on the cross, so all sins would be uh, taken care of, and everyone can be forgiven. There's no sin too big for God to, to forgive. So this is not this morning a condemning message. It's a, it's a message of grace. Let's, let's return to the Lord. Let's, let's confess our, our sins. Let's, let's be washed by the blood of the Lamb. Let's be forgiven. And let's choose the biblical model. Let's receive Christ as Lord and Savior and the Spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Spirit, will help us live a holy life, a life pleasing to God. Let's learn to love everyone with God's love. Let's ask the Lord day after day after day to fill us with the Holy Spirit, to fill us with His love so we can love our enemies, so we can love our children properly, so our children can love their parents properly, so we can love our neighbor. You shall love the Lord your God but also your neighbor as yourself, caring for people, caring for what they go through, even loving our enemies, learning to, learning to forgive. The, the best thing with him we can do is fall in love with God, respond to the love of God, and then love everyone with the love of God motivating us. One thing also we need to rediscover the beauty of friendship. Let's be friends without having sex. Boys with boys, no sex. Girls with girls, no sex. That's friendship. Let's rediscover friendship. And don't be afraid to, to, to stand and to say, no, I don't, I don't agree with you. Because what happens is when you, when you share the biblical model you're bringing light into people's lives. Who will bring light if uh, no one tells what, what the Bible says? If, if we want people to be forgiven, people to be blessed, people to understand the love of God, people to overcome uh, non-biblical uh, sexuality, uh, what, what's wrong with sexuality when it's not practice the way God wants us to practice it within marriage. If we want people to reach that, we have to share the, the gospel with them. 
There, there are people all over the world today that are rediscovering Jesus, that are rediscovering the Bible, that are rediscovering the biblical model, and, and they give testimonies. There are amazing, amazing testimonies of people who've gone to all the sexual extremes, and now they have been purified. If you read the, the, the letters of Paul, you, you see that he was telling people in his day, you, you had those uh, immorality things in your life. You were some of those, but God has washed you. God has changed you. And God wants to use us to change others. So don't be, don't be afraid to stand for what the Bible said. Amen? Let us pray at this, at this time. And uh, in a few seconds, we will uh, stop the recording. Let us pray. Let us pray this morning. Lord, we thank you that you have given us the revelation of who you are, the revelation of your love. You have taught us through the scriptures, through the Bible, what is, is wrong. And not only do you teach us what is wrong, but you come when we invite you to be our God, to be our Savior, to be our Lord. And you give us your spirit, your Holy Spirit, to be able to overcome all temptations and have genuine, real, everlasting peace. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to know you, to know the Bible, to be born again. And I encourage you, if you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, let's do it today. Just do it today. It's, it's so simple to say, well, God, I come to you as I am. You know everything about me. You know all my life. You know all my sins. Please forgive me. Please, Jesus, be my Savior, be my Lord, and He will give you the new life, the new birth, and you will be able to be strong. Amen? Amen. Uh, we invite you to come and join us at uh, Brookdale Christian Center, 6030 Xerxes Avenue North in Brooklyn Center. 55430. Share this link uh, on our Facebook page, BCC Brookdale Christian Center, with your friends. Share this message around. This is such an easy way to share the gospel today by just sharing with, uh, with your contacts. Join us to pray. We pray every day at noon in the weekend. Saturday, Sunday at 6, and also Wednesday at 6. The number is 763-307-2760. Some of you have asked us how you can support us, support our church. Well, you can use Cash App, Brookdale Christian Center. The number is 612-715-0846. Dollar BCC AG offering. You can also go on our website, bccag.com, under Give. You can mail a check to the church. You can call our treasurer, Adib, at 763 350 6154. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you.